quite the season for you at Liverpool to get time to, to reflect on it all between the end of the season and coming into Ireland camp? Yeah, I had a good a good amount of time to obviously uh, celebrate and, and reflect on the season we had. So uh, it's just a relief really to get back up to the, the top division and um, be back there now come in September and get ready to compete. So a uh, fantastic year, but I'm um, delighted to be back up where we, where we should be. And how does that affect you then when you come into Ireland camp? You're obviously feel like you're on top of the world. Yeah, it's it's a great boost, uh, I suppose, for the Irish girls that are involved there as well. Like we're we're playing in the top division. It's a great boost coming into the girls that are already playing in the top division as well. So they add a bit of confidence as well. So looking ahead to the game against Georgia on Monday, obviously everyone expects you to win. You beat them 11 0 You're going to have plenty of possession. You tend to play in the back three as one of the, the outside three. So I'm just wondering, given your your experience as a midfielder as well are you encouraged to get forward in that system yeah there's like a, a lot of freedom to to express yourself in the role I think when we're we're probably it's going to be a different game to at the one in Tala um you know pitch conditions temperature they had a couple of players missing with COVID so it's I don't think it's going to be the exact same so um prepare for every possibility and then um, that will be adapted to the role then as well and I suppose with any game like this, the first goal is always is crucial. The longer Georgia hold out, I suppose, the, the more pressure on you. Yeah, for sure. It's um, it's it's always it's always a real settler to to score early in any game, uh, and especially games like this where you're expecting a low block. Uh, so if we can score early, great. If not, we just have to keep focus, keep calm, and um, it, I'm sure it'll come. Speaking of keeping calm, will you get to see the All Ireland quarter final on Sunday? <laughs> I'm hope I'm hoping so. I, I, it depends what time training works out. I have it half worked out. If training's later in the evening, I'll get it because it's the first game on. Um, so my yeah, I, I'm hoping I have I have my uh, sources. I, I have a dodgy boss. I don't know if I should be saying that, but I have a, <laughs> I have a dodgy <laughs> box with me. So uh, I'm all set up. Okay. Well, look, enjoy that and, and best of luck on Monday. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Louise. Hi, Neve. How are you doing? Hi, Louise. How are things? Good, thanks. Um, just a couple from me, really. Uh, with with uh, two more qualifiers to come now in September, how important is it to win on Monday? Just just to set you up right for those two matches later in the year. Yeah, we can't uh, we can't take our eye off the ball. Um, we, we have to get past this test first, and it, I'm expecting a, a much more difficult test than we had in in Tala. So, um, yeah, it's important to not get too too far ahead of ourselves and we're not really we're we're fully focused on the game uh given um sorry where am i going to here now sorry substitutions obviously will be will be um no doubt play a big part given the conditions now for this match against georgia how important is it to have that depth on the bench yeah it's huge i think um especially attacking options as well uh it's it's important that you know People are ready and I think we have a squad here that is more than capable of coming in, making an impact, stepping in for anybody. Um, so we have strength and depth, which is obviously great for us. And finally, there seems to be great momentum building on this team under Vera at the moment. Do you think it's it's at its strongest point that it's ever been at? Yeah, I think if you look probably historically over the year, the squads that we've had, I think if you look at everyone that's in a full-time environment, this is the strongest we've ever been and also the level um, that people are playing at in terms of the clubs. So, yeah, I think without doubt, this is probably the strongest and fittest squad we've ever had. That's great. Thanks a million, Neve. No worries. Thank you. Uh, Emma Duffy. Any of our things? Hi, Emma. How are things? Good. I'm good, thanks. Um, you spoke there about, you know, not taking your eye off the ball. Um, you spoke in the past about how, how big reaching a major tournament with Ireland would mean to you, but is it kind of fair to say that the World Cup dream is more alive than ever at the minute? Yeah, we're, we're right in the mix. Um, I think, obviously, there's talks of playoffs and all the rest, but we know we have three huge games coming up, and the first one is Georgia. So um, we need to make sure there's no slip-ups. And, um, yeah, starting with Georgia, it's, that's going to be the first step. And then just one more for me, Neve. Um, obviously, the Euros this summer are just across the water. Uh, you guys will be watching from the outside looking in. I know that's obviously gut wrenching, but does that give you that extra little bit of motivation as well? Obviously, seeing teammates and opponents uh, over, you know, on the biggest stage in the world. Yeah, I suppose it's like again, it's it's a bitter sweet feeling. You're obviously delighted for like Fernie, who's who's with me at Liverpool, and um, they're 
their first appearance at the finals, but then you think of the what ifs or what could have been. So it's going to be it's going to be tough in that respect to to watch it. But um, I suppose that's just a added motive fuel to the fire that we have to to do our own thing and take care of ourselves and get to a major tournament. Super. Thanks, Neve. Best of luck next week. Thank you. Sorry, uh, Dave Kelly. Hi Neve. Um just Hi. a question there on, on your on your club colleague Leanne. Uh like she she's had you know difficulties um you, you know with a couple of minor injuries and she, you know she missed the goal fest um against Georgia. Uh looking at it very baldly, her statistics are modest for you know a top striker. But I mean, do you have you seen enough from what she did at Liverpool during your campaign to kind of um you know, anticipate that she could really explode as an international striker in terms of um, that facility that she seems to have. I know it's in the second level, but just to, to find the back of the net, which is the, the very sim simplistic aim of, of this sport that you play. I mean, are you seeing something from her that she could, you know, really establish herself as the as the principal striker for her? Yeah, for, for sure. I think even Leanne herself would openly admit, you know, she's not the finished article. She has lots to improve on in her game, but she's also got such natural raw ability and talent that not many people have. So I've seen enough of her and her application and dedication and motivation to where she wants to get to. And I've no doubt she can achieve that. It's unfortunate she's missing this camp. And she's also had a rough couple of uh, years with injuries and, and stuff. So um, she just needs a solid, a solid base uh, to kick on and really allow her potential to flourish. Lovely, thank you. Welcome. Anyone else there? Hands up. Sorry, no back and forth. Anyone else for questions? I'll take one, Gary. Please, yeah, come on, John. Dave, how you doing? How you doing, John? How are things? Good, thanks. Good. Just, just on Liverpool, um, like it, they've had a, a lot of ups and downs over the years in terms of the you know the, the women's side of things. Do you expect that you will have a real go next season rather than you know just trying to consolidate and that hasn't really worked for a lot of the teams over the years that have been promoted yes but there's there's like a, a long-term plan in place and you hear these things but i thought the main aim for us is obviously to um to stay in the division first and foremost to consolidate and then to build um i know that the, the backroom staff mm -hmm. and the people higher up in the club have spoken of the plan that's in place to build liverpool back up to be challenging for titles winning titles so that's all part, uh, part and parcel of where we'll be at next year. But the main focus is to obviously stay in the league and uh, finish as high up as possible. And and just for you, for you as captain, you know, at, at a fairly momentous time, like do you, do you feel the women's team has become more sort of integral to the club? I know yourself and you know uh, um, Jordan Henderson would be. Will be seen as equals in terms of invites to things, but have you noticed that you've been there quite a while now? Yeah, there's there's definitely since I've come the last four years, there's definitely been like a shift in in how the club view the women's team. Uh, you could you could say that we did start from a very low, uh, a low level of, of where we were thought of, but now it's completely changed, which is which is brilliant and how it should be. And with Susan Black and Billy Hogan as CEO, they really care for the for the women's team and are and it's one of the top. Uh, priorities within the club, getting the women's team back competing at a, at the top level. Great, thanks, Dave. Cheers. Anyone else, sir? Yeah, uh, Gareth, I'll just ask one or two. Dave, how are you? Good morning, Laura. Must morning. be in the afternoon there. Yeah. Um, just uh, two things. One is that uh, you're moving into territory at a personal level, uh, in caps wise, of maybe you know you becoming the the most capped women's player and you know ending up going close maybe to where a former men's captain Robbie Keane went with, with his caps record is that something that's take you take personal pride from getting so many caps and and you know, remember the Centurion Club now yeah I was um well, I'm not aware of the caps since I've reached the 100 I I'm not even aware of what I'm on to be honest uh it's it is a proud moment for me as well to get as many caps as it is but um yeah it's it's maybe something you look back on after your career more so uh than when you're actually in it 103 one man 103 103 
<laughs> the sec second one's just going back to your roots. There's great plans in Galway with this new academy uh, through the Comers. It, that could really boost girls underage football and boys underage football in the region. It's, it's brilliant to see the work that's going on at home at a grassroots level. And I know a lot of the people involved in Galway as well are, are really pushing um, pushing the game forward and obviously and young people especially. So, uh, yeah, it's, fa it's fantastic to see. And it, it's, um, it's, yeah, it's long overdue, I suppose. That's great. Thanks, Dave. Cheers. Thank you. Can, can I just have an addendum? Do you mind? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, it's, it's, this is a very broad, broad based question, but I'm just giving you're spending a lot of time um, in, in Turkey and before you came out. As you get to another kind of um, definitive stage of a qualifying campaign uh, and you've yet to complete one successfully, I'm just wondering, have you done any work as a, as a group on, on, on the kind of mental resilience piece? Um, in terms of that aspect, because obviously, you know, you're, you're improving the technical aspects all the time, but just in terms of, of a squad mentality, and getting outside help in, or just how have you been able to kind of harden yourselves up in, in that aspect? Because that, as, as the time ticks on and it gets tighter, you know, that, that becomes almost as important. Yeah, no, for, I, we haven't had any outside person come in, but Vera is uh, to the forefront of making sure we're mentally ready for the challenge and um she does a great job at that to be fair to her so um it, she does work a lot on the the mindset and the psyche of the players and being ready so uh there's no need for kind of like an outside influence but um yeah she, she has us prepped and ready for that so is there can you give us a, a, an insight even or a one if 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 you were asked by a leadership kind of forum or a seminar involving other sports i mean what would be the key takeaway from you that you would impart to them big thing is confidence really um the le belief that's maybe something that maybe we've lacked in the past not having that real you know uh i suppose yeah belief that we were going to get over the line and believing that we're good enough so having that confidence to say yeah we're we're irish but we can also play we're good footballers we can do this, you know, not getting harping back to the past, the nearly moments. Um, that's probably one of the biggest takeaways I would I would say. Yeah, that probably does that tune into your own personal perspective. I mean, like a cricketer, you're not worried about the hundred you just scored. You're 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 just l l looking ahead and not counting. It's not about it's about one half one hundred and four, half one hundred and five. It's just that's the focus for you. For sure, I don't I don't look past George. I know everyone even at home is talking about, oh, I can't wait for the Finland and Slovakia games, but we can't, at top level, you can't take Anton for granted. And that's one of the lessons I've learned in the past with all the games we've had. We've slipped up in games where we've meant, we've greased away, meant to have taken three points we haven't, and that's ultimately cost us. So all those learnings are crucial. Got to just keep one step ahead, one foot in front of the other. And, and that's, just, that's just how you have to go about it.